then you would do it even better. So just as a disclaimer, this meeting will be recorded. And so you can go to the site and we will offer the recording anytime on our site. Also, if you haven't already, we will drop the sign-in sheet in the chat. I just dropped it in the chat. Or give me a second. Okay, now it's in the chat. So just fill it out if you haven't already. Okay, so getting started, we'll start and introduce ourselves. So my name is Samarth. I am the co-president of WebDev at Berkeley, and I'm also the vice president of finance. And Vicky can go next. Hello, everyone. My name is Vicky, and I'm also a co-president. Um, yeah, Justin? Yeah, I'm Justin, and I'm the external VP here at WebDev. Um, around these parts, they call me a DT of a wall, and I am VP internal. Irvin, may you introduce yourself next? What is up, you beautiful people? My name is Irvin Bakhtai, and I am VP of Education and Head of Technology here at beautiful WDB. Hey, Irvin, your like, sound is really low, really quiet. It'd be like that sometimes. How about now? Um, the same. Hello? Hello? Still the same. Hello? Still the same. You're not doing anything. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Changing. This whole time. Yeah, sorry, technical difficulties, you know? It, it really do be like that sometimes. In the meantime, please put Fs in the chat uh, while I fix this. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. So just to preface, as you guys saw, we were just playing Minesweeper, eating, playing the Melodica. We'll have to keep it casual around here. You know, because at the end of the day, we're a family, but you know, I'll get to that on our Who We Are slide. But for now, I'm gonna talk about what web development at Berkeley is, because obviously that's what all of you are here to find out. So what is web development at Berkeley? Well, we are UC Berkeley's hub for everything web development and design related. If you've never coded before, we're perfect for you. We have an education branch where students can go to learn all about design, development, become full stack developers, able to go into the industry and build anything they can put their mind to. If you have a lot of experience in design or development in a front end or back end stack, then you can join our industry track where you can work with high growth startups on really meaningful and impactful projects. We'll be building apps from the ground up for these amazing companies that we're partnering with. So next, I know we already done a brief introduction, but we'll go more into just who we are exactly. So we'll start from the left and go to the right, and we'll do the first row and the second row. So and Vicky can start. Hello, everyone. As I said, my name is Vicky. That's me on the left. Um, I'm a second year uh, majoring in computer science, and I, like I said, I'm a co-president and vice president of marketing here. Um, really excited for this semester. Um, web development is something that we felt was very lacking on the campus. We just want to create a centralized hub where you can find all these resources and build a community around what we love to do. So yeah, Samar. Yeah, so as I said, my name is Samarth. I am a second year studying computer science and business administration. And my role is also co-president with Vicky and the vice president of finance. So I just really love web development. I, we created this club to really spread our love and our passion for web development. It's not really well taught subject here at Berkey and we want to change that. So next is Justin. Okay, anyways, hey guys, I'm Justin. Like I said before, I'm the external VP. I'm a second year computer science and applied math major. Um, and yeah, just like everyone else, I'm, I'm super excited just for the opportunities um, that we can have together. Um, I'm really excited to just grow together as a team. Um, and as you guys can kind of see, we, we have, we're, we're trying to have like a pretty fun culture um, around here and I can't wait to just spread our passion with everyone. And next up we have Irvin. Okay. So I'm sorry to derail these vibes, but can people hear me? Yeah, it's better. Okay, thank God. Okay, so what up? I am Irvin. I study bioengineering and eeks. Um, and I, like I said before, I'm VP of education. And I've always been like involved with education at Berkeley for the past three years that I've been at Berkeley, um, whether it was course staff or AIing or being a TA, like I, teaching is one of my like, dear, dear passions. And I always wanted to uh, extend that teaching passion to web development as well, which is why I joined this board. And um, last and definitely least, my name is Aditya Bawal, and I'm an EECS major at UC Berkeley, an incoming sophomore. Um, and, you know, just like the rest, I have a passion for web dev, but that's a given. Um, as VP internal, um, I deal with the internal workings of the club. I'm basically human resources, in case you guys know what human resources is. Um, that's a good comparison. Um, and yeah, I, I really love people, talking to people and my job facilitates that onto the extended leadership. All right, hey guys, my name is Timon. I am a second year mechanical engineering student and I am head of design together with Vicky and a teacher. 
And I joined web dev because uh, I really enjoy teaching people and I'm very passionate about design. Um, and also because I, I really uh, like undertaking UI UX challenges, which is um, definitely a part of the, the, the dev aspect of our club. Hi everyone, I'm April. I, unlike everyone else, do not have a passion for web development. I do have a passion for preventing things like tax fraud. I am the head of the legal department and what I do is I basically write up contracts for the projects that web dev pursues so that even if we're not doing them for profit, they are completely professional and they're done well. And yeah, I just want to foster a culture of not committing crimes. I'm a political science major. That gives you any context. All right, awesome. So now, quickly before we go on to the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna talk about how exactly we got started because that really is a big part of who we are. So me, Aditya, and Vicky actually knew each other from a while ago. We were friends in the dorms. And one time I was like, hey, you know, Hackathon seemed really cool, free travel, right? So I was like searching up the MLH website and I saw USC had a hackathon, you know, only seven hours away, not too bad. And they were paying us $20 to get there. Pretty solid. So we, so I decided to ask my friends like, hey, what about a free trip to you? Okay, not free trip to USC. They gave us 20 bucks uh, this weekend and we agreed and we went there and it was super fun. We built our first web app ever. It was huge, computer vision, PHP, all these buzzwords we had no idea about and people taught us about. It was amazing. I lost 10 brain cells that time, so we ended with two, but you know, not gain. And it was just really an amazing time. So at the end of it, sleep deprived on two hours of sleep, 36 hours, on another eight hour bus ride back to Berkeley, we were like, you know, that was fun. You know, we somehow taught that. And it was like, we should share this with the rest of the Berkeley community because we had to rely on a bunch of people to help us in order to create our first web app, websites, mentors. This one guy from Google sat down with us for three hours. So that was very much appreciated. But basically, you can't do that every day on campus. You don't have a Google employee sitting next to you. So we decided to make WDB to really share our passion for development and the opportunity to do it, not just at hackathons or, because, or with personal projects, but with teams creating meaningful projects. So next slide. Yeah, so we have two branches, our education branch, our development branch, and now Irvin will talk about our education branch in more depth for those who don't have experience in web development or minimal experience. Yeah, so before we jump into that, um, as Mark said, yeah, we have two main, um, we have two main, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? Yeah, so we have two main branches. Um, and like, like, so yeah, we have the education branch and the development branch and Irvin will be talking about that. And before we really dive into everything, um, we want to talk about some Zoom logistics for how we're going to kind of structure everything later on. So as you guys um, know, we have these two branches and as soon as you know which track you want to learn more about or ask questions about, you, um, we want you to change your Zoom username um, to include it so that we know where to put you guys in the breakout room. So use the tags with bracket dev or bracket edu, um, like the examples down there, so you guys can know more about, um, so you guys can join those breakout rooms and uh, ask us questions um, in those breakout rooms. And uh, yeah, so now we'll push it over to Irvin who will talk about our first intro. Um, Irvin? We cannot hear you. My, my microphone was <laughs> muted. Uh, go Bears. Um, if you're just joining us, I am the VP of Education and Education is my passion, which is why I'm head of the Education Track. So yes, our development branch has everything that you need to learn the basics of full stack web development. No prior experience required. Our education track has two different kinds of domain emphasis, the back end track and the front end track. Uh, the back end track focuses on technologies like Node.js, Django, and AWS, whereas the front end track focuses on technologies like React, Bootstrap, and general UI UX principles, or like aesthetics, if you will. And if you don't know what these are, don't worry, we'll explain it later on uh, in this presentation. Um, going off of that, um, after you finish our education track, you'll also have completed a capstone project at the very end of the semester. So let's go ahead and take a little deep dive into what our education track uh, entails. Justin? So yeah. first of all, I am a back-end teacher for the education track. Um, so if you join our back-end track, you will see me there teaching you all of our basics. And this is our amazing team of educators in our uh, education track. And if they're here, they can go ahead and introduce themselves. 
okay. starting with Vicky, maybe. Yeah, sorry, sorry. My phone almost fell. Um, hi, guys. I already introduced myself like two times, but I'm going to be teaching UI UX design in our education track. All right. Is any of our other... Oh, Tish, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, once again, I am a design teacher. Uh, and I will, together with Vicky, be teaching UI UX design. And the, it's going to be very spicy. So, um, yeah, I hope you're excited. And we have two more educators. Alex, which is a full stack educator. So you'll see him on both the front end side and the back end side. And Arushi, which is on our front end side. Sadly, they're not here, but I can guarantee that these are amazing people. Next slide. Okay, so diving deeper into the education track, what exactly are we going to teach you? And the first, in, in the first three weeks, we're going to be teaching you the basic stack or a basic, and what a stack is, is a collection of related technologies. We're going to go over three of them, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, if you don't know what these are, that's completely okay. Um, I like to use the house analogy to describe what these are. So let's say you have a house. HTML is your foundation of the house. It's your hardwood floors. It is your load bearing beams. It is the concrete below you. It's what keeps the house together, basically. CSS is where things start getting a little bit, uh, you know, spicy. So like you have your rugs, your carpets, your curtains, the aesthetic, the wow, you know, that's where CSS starts coming into play. And then finally, we have JavaScript. And JavaScript is the bread and butter of uh, these, this main stack in which you want plumbing? Well, that's how you get plumbing. JavaScript adds plumbing to your house. You want electricity in your house? Bam, that's JavaScript. So those are the three things we're going to teach you. And though it may be called the basic stack, it is extremely, extremely powerful. Every single website um, on the World Wide Web uses these three, stack, three stacks no matter what. In fact, Netflix and GitHub, which you see here, only use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because of how core and powerful they are. They're also extremely fast. And you get to learn about that in the basic stack. Moving on past the basic stack is when we start getting into our domain emphasis. And the first up is front end, which Samarth can talk about. Yeah, so what is front end? You know, when I definitely started learning web development, I had no idea what front or back end meant. So we're going to take a moment to explain those just because they are pretty fundamental to web development. So front end, put simply, is everything you can see and everything you can interact with. A good example would be Facebook. Pretty much everything you do in Facebook, from posts to interacting with posts and just viewing everything, is part of the front end. And Facebook is actually really famous in the front end world for their sort of contributions. So one of the biggest front end technologies is called React, which Facebook actually created and made open source, which means that anybody can kind of work on it and add to it. And this React framework is the most popular in the world of web development. As you can see, there are a huge amount of companies, Tesla, Uber, Airbnb, that use React and these other technologies that are listed above. So going deeper into our kind of what we teach in our front end branch. React obviously is extremely fundamental to all things web development. If you want to go into front end, we'll be teaching UI UX design principles. So some of you may not know what UI UX means. UI stands for user interface and UX stands for user experience. So what that basically means is user interface is everything design related like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Figma, if you've heard of it, basically creating what you see on the screen. User experience is how you interact with it. So how do you post? I don't know what, what time the educator, I don't know what the educator. Uh, yes, was there a question? Yeah, if you're, um, if you don't have a, or yeah, so save your questions for the end, hopefully when we have, when we have the breakout rooms, but for now, if you guys can just stay muted, um, that'll help us go along. If you have any questions immediately, just feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, but yeah, I was saying, so user experience is basically everything you interact with. So how do user feels about the site? How easy it is to use? All that stuff. And that's really where our design aspect ticks in, in terms of our education. So we also teach some other technologies such as TypeScript and SAS, which are more advanced tools, which make you write, which help you write code faster, less code, and create some really amazing products. As you can see, Instagram, Tesla, Khan Academy, all these are built on the tools that we are teaching you. In addition, I just want to add that React and all these other tools can also be transferred to the mobile realm. There's a tool called React Native, which Tesla uses for their mobile app, which Facebook uses for their mobile app. So by learning these things, not only do you learn web development, you also learn mobile development. So now we'll teach you about the other half of development with backend with Urban. So now onto backend. Backend refers to how data is transferred from internal servers and databases to the actual website. Now, what the heck does that even mean? Well, let's use Twitter as an example. You type out a tweet, you type out your hot take and then press send and bam, your friends retweet your messages from the world over. But how the heck does that work? 
bam, backend development, only possible with backend. Now, what about streaming sports videos with ESPN or video game streams from Twitch? Bam, also only possible with backend web development. The front end engineers design hot and like spicy websites, whereas the back end engineers actually make the magic happen behind the scenes. Continuing from Smart's example, everything you see on Facebook may be front end, but the data is transferred, created, handled, and queried completely from the back end side. Just like how there are multiple extremely popular front end technologies, back end has some as well. In our back end track, we'll be covering Node.js, a Django, REST API development, cloud with AWS. Oh my God, so much like these are my passions, and that's back end. Yeah, that was very cool, Irvin. Now let's go ahead and talk about the development track. So our dev branch will connect our devs with startups and companies from the Bay Area and beyond. Um, basically, we want our students to be able to take part of the full engineering life the full software engineering life cycle starting with designing um, the site and UI UX aspects, but also building and deploying a client site. Uh, specifically for this fall, uh, we have a few projects with Cal professors and companies like CarePath. So th those will be really cool things to look out for as a developer. Um, there's also a large design UI UX project that we're going to be taking on, um, which, will, which we'll be needing great designers for as well. Um, and yeah, we, we work with these startups and companies during the course of the semester, and we split our developers into um, with our developers and designers to work on these projects, um, as well as other, several other small projects that we might have. Um, like I said before, we're aiming to provide our devs with industry experience, working on the client side while also pushing teamwork among web devs, our WDB devs. Um, we'll go more into detail with our past projects in the next slide, and you can check them out yourself at web at berkeley.org slash projects. Um, yeah, so our projects have two different categories. So our first category is pro bono. So for certain organizations on campus, such as the such as UC Berkeley nonprofits, um, student-led organizations, and other organizations like that, we're doing 100% pro bono work. And we think that it's important to give back to our fellow students who are also working on launching their own clubs and launching their own projects just like we are. And we think that every organization can definitely benefit from having a beautiful website. And we're more than happy to help them um, with that. Typically these sites contain only front end, but it can also um, vary based on their own needs. Uh, for example, we've worked with GrowTech. We, we developed the sites for GrowTech, Formula Electric, and the Berkeley Forum, and we're working on maintaining the website for space technologies at Cal. All right, next up, um, I'll go ahead and introduce our product managers. So our product managers will oversee each of the projects. As a developer in the dev branch, you'll be working closely with them on your respective projects. And now I'll hand it off to any of the PMs in um, the Zoom call for you guys to introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Neha and I'm going to be a product manager. Um, I'm super excited to work with great people and produce some amazing products for our clients. Yeah, and I believe Emily and Aman are not here, but Emily is a sophomore CS major and Aman is a senior EX major. Yeah, so these people are, are all like really amazing and it's been a pleasure working with them this summer and I really look forward to spearheading the dev branch with them in the future. And uh, next on to Vicky, who will talk about our application process. Yeah, so now we're gonna talk about the most exciting aspect of this entire info session, I'm sure. Um, so the application process, it looks a little bit different for students and developers, so we'll go a little bit more into detail about what it entails for either branch. So starting with students, uh, students will first do a written portion uh, plus an optional resume drop. You can drop your resume, but we do not require it and we do not use it to evaluate your application. It's just for reference during interviews to make the process go faster. And then after that, if selected, you will be given a behavioral interview with a few of our execs. These are very chill, not scary, because our execs are pretty short. Um, but yeah, so that's the entire process for students. Um, not super complicated, but for developers, it looks a little bit different. Developers will also start with a written application but you'll also be given the chance to submit portfolios for your respective um, stack. So for example, designers can do design portfolios and then engineers, uh, the developers can submit like GitHub links for your coding projects. Um, and then after that, you will have a short behavioral interview and a small technical interview. And then after that, you will have a fun and short developer project um, to work on in the span of a few days. And then you'll give a short presentation on it, just talking about your thought process um, and everything. Yeah. So that's what our application process looks like. Um, you can find more information on our website. 
So now I'll pass on to Urban, who's going to talk about uh, what we look for in our applicants. Thank you, Vicky. So there are only three things that we look for in our applicants. One, that they're a registered Berkeley student. Two, that they have a pulse. And three, that they have the dedication, passion, and a drive to learn. So web development is not easy to pick up, and we especially understand that for the first time. But after you get over the initial bump of starting to learn web development, it gets a lot easier. And hopefully we're trying, we'll try to like have that easiness uh, go through. Um, we really value dedication, um, dedication and the ability to stick around with the material. So that's why we're looking for mainly, mainly a dedication, passion, and drive to learn so that students can uh, stick with our edu entire education track. Not going to lie, there is a lot of our, in our education track. Like I did say, we go through the basic stack, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in only the first three weeks. And then we dedicate the rest of the semester to projects and your domain. But don't be scared. It's OK. Um, it's OK to ask questions a lot. Uh, during our education track and to collaborate with others. In fact, we highly encourage it. We want sort of a hackathon vibe so that people can learn uh, the most uh, amount of material as possible while still having the most amount of fun with their uh, peers. So don't be afraid to jump straight into the projects and just start building for the sake of learning and creating. That's the type of vibe that we want to foster during in our education track. And we're always willing to help other people if you don't understand or need something to do. So. Yeah, that's what we look for in our education track. And I think Justin can talk more about our developer track. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so for our developers, what we're really looking for in our developers is experience in either design, front end, or a back end stack. Um, if you're full stack, that's even better. Um, as mentioned before, we'll be taking a look at your resume and any projects that you might have worked on before. Um, we would love to see experience working with teams in development projects, but obviously this isn't something that's like super necessary, but it will show that you have been able to work in this kind of environment before. Um, so specifically for design, if you're applying for design, we would prefer if you had experience with Figma and Illustrator. Um, we want to know that you have designed a lot of things before and have a design portfolio, and we'll definitely ask to see your past design work. Um, next up, if you're applying for front end, we recommend applying if you have pretty extensive experience with Basic Stack um, and React and other front end frameworks. And lastly, um, if you're applying as a back end developer, um, we're hoping that you have experience with databases, Node, and Django. Um, we talked earlier, uh, earlier about devs having projects after the first round of interviews and the first round of applications. Um, so, specifically for our front end developers, um, they will be developing a project in React. Uh, for backend, the project will require some knowledge of API calls and data structures. And for design, we'll be asking you to design a spicy UI UX for a fake company. And yeah, now I'll go ahead and pass that um, pass it on to Aditya, who will talk about the internal nitty gritty about how our club works. All right. So the internal nitty gritty is where I reside. And this slide, now I know a lot of information has been thrown at you guys about you know times, meetings, all that. Oh no, if I'm in this branch, what do I do? Or oh no, if I'm in that branch, what do I do? So this slide right here lays it all out for you. So all of our meetings are over Zoom, so that's a given. And from left to right, general meetings are for all me are for all members, and they occur twice a month. These are mainly used to touch base on the club as a whole and to discuss various updates. Now for developers, the next card you will meet with your team twice a week to work for an hour minimum. Uh, this is to sync often and to keep on top of your game for the project. At the end of the semester, you will showcase your project, of course. The next card, lessons, is for students. They have two lessons a week and total three hours a week of lesson. Project showcase and work time will be at the end of the semester. Now, the last card, the rightmost card, is for everyone, and it's my favorite card of the deck. Socials will be every week, and they are optional, but they are very fun. So it's up to you if you wanna have fun or not. And lastly, um, everyone is allowed to sit in for every meeting. So if you're a student, you can go to the team meetings if you want, but it's not required. And if you're a developer, you can go to the lectures if you want, but it's not required. All right, now maybe move on to the next slide, please. So plans for remote. Now, I know we do have a little bit of a pandemic going on in the world and well, that is unfortunate but we can compensate for it lectures will be held online and recorded for those in other time zones so don't worry if you are on the other side of the globe developer teams are free to meet with their teams in person but we highly recommend that you meet online 
uh, socials will all be remote and activities will mostly be digital, such as movies or online games. And recruitment will also be remote. Applications are online and interviews will be over Zoom. The developer project will also be able to be completed entirely from home. Next slide, please. So our culture is a priority. As Web Dev at Berkeley, we strongly value friendships and we prefer to have a casual atmosphere over a professional atmosphere. We like to think of ourselves as a family rather than a team. And we have many things to help create this atmosphere. One thing that we do is one-on-ones with the VP internal, which is me, by the way. Uh, this is where I check up on you guys one-on-one -on -one and make sure that the club experience is well tailored, where you guys can give feedback if needed. Furthermore, we also have a donut system, which we have on Slack where members who don't know each other can be randomly paired up in groups of two to three to meet online, to make friends if they want to. It's completely optional, it's opt-in or opt-out. Mental health is of great importance. We do not want members to slave themselves away to web development, but on the other hand, we do want to see people try their best and to grow as developers. Next slide, please. So what do we offer you in terms of socials? So. COVID-19 may have impacted our ability to socialize, but that's nothing that we can't compensate for. Socials occur every weekend, and again, they're optional. You don't have to go to everyone, but we recommend that you do. And they involve the entire club. However, there is one branch-specific social for each branch sometime during the semester. So a uh, social that's just for education or a social that's just for developers. Now, with COVID-19, all our socials will be online, of course. So the types of socials we will have will include things like game nights, movie nights, and so even study parties where we can help each other out in outside academics. Uh, we're also very open to suggestions for new ideas for games to play and any movies that you guys wanna watch together. Once quarantine ends and when it's safe to do so, we will have in-person socials, which will be much more diverse. We are excited to have those, but unfortunately we won't have them yet. They will range from board and party games to eating together to volunteering and much, much more. Now I will hand it over to Vicki Lee, who will talk about recruitment. Yeah, so this is what our timeline looks like for recruitment. Our applications have been open, open for a bit now. So if we've already sold you and you're already ready to full send your application, then go for it. Follow the link on the slide. Um, info session one, you are currently at, as we all know. The next info session is on the 7th. I don't know why you'd want to go, but you can go to that one too. Um, applications close on the 10th and then interviews are in the week following. All right, so thank you guys for attending. Um, the application form is here. Uh, scan this QR code if you want to save the link. And now we're gonna move on to breakout Q&A sessions. So if you haven't already, please do change your Zoom name to include the track that you're interested in so that Justin can sort you into the correct breakout room so you can talk to the correct people. Um, yeah, so like for example, I'm Vicky. I don't know anything about web dev, so I'm gonna put an edu tag in front of my name. If you have general questions, then leave your name as it is and stick around in a main session until you're ready to decide. And once you're in a room, if you want to switch rooms, then feel free to leave your room, come back to the main session and request to be moved. Um, yeah, sorry, it's kind of a clumsy process, but yeah. So go ahead and change your names if you have not yet. And we'll start our breakout session. And um, another thing to note, so um, we'll be having like kind of pseudo office hours where you guys can ask us about your application. Um, so we're having like virtual Calpalooza on Friday, September 4th uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, and we'll, we'll post it on our social media and everything so you guys can keep up to date. But you guys can definitely ask us like one-on-one -on -one about um, like maybe the application process there as well. And um, last of all, I just want to tell everyone Thank you for coming. It was our pleasure. We know these times are tough, but it just makes seeing you all so much more special for us. So I just one last time, thank you so much. And now we'll be splitting up into breakout rooms shortly. Yeah, so if you guys see the prompt, go ahead and click on it um, and then just go jump. Okay. And um, Vicky, I'm gonna assign you to 